What's going on you guys slumpy here and we are going to be discussing today Andres's deck profile that he did in Spanish I'm going to be trying to translate it as best as I can for y'all um, Kind of going over his choices and some important stuff that he kind of explained in his video um, First and foremost uh, at the end of Andres's video and this is huge um, Andres's uh, I believe sister was actually in the hospital um, so she couldn't make it to Guadalajara and Andres actually told her that he would win the YCS for her. So, uh, huge shout outs to him. Um, that's awesome, man. Congratulations. Uh, if you guys want to watch his deck profile live, the link will be in the description below. Andres did say that he was going to go more in depth on the, his choices and everything. So look forward to that. Make sure to go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Go check him out. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get into his deck. So this is his deck list as you guys can see here uh, He got his fifth YCS title, which is insane um, And his choices were when I was like reading over the whole entire deck and like listening in I like realized that like a lot of his choices like he says in the very end of his video um, He says uh, that you know a lot of people will, like look at his list and are like you know like oh like how is that going to win and stuff and andres's choices he says his choices aren't you know just like you know last minute changes or just like oh well, i hope this works like andres puts a lot of time and effort into his deck um and which is another reason why he wants to give a more in-depth uh video for everybody so they can actually you know see why he made the changes and not just look at the deck list and try to pick it up you know so he wants to like help educate and that's why he started up his own youtube channel and everything uh but without further ado let's go ahead and get to the deck profile i wrote some notes down uh on what he was saying and i'm gonna kind of go over it um so he went over three aliber uh he said it's standard you should always be playing three uh andres played three challenge three tragedy so he can utilize it turn one uh since he was playing foolish and gold sark um he states that there should be no reason why you should only be playing two as in the grind game it comes up and three is definitely the correct number uh he played three branded opening so that there's eight ways to get to aliber there's like three aliber three opening one gold sark and one foolish uh his three bricks in his deck were ad libitum despian comedy and dramaturge he states that a lot of people don't play all three but each one has a reason for being in the deck he goes over that Ablivium lets you reuse mirror jade dramaturge is another name you can bring out so the possibility of you opening three names is very common when you're playing foolish and gold sark and have ways to get them out with branded fusion not to mention just hard drawing it it's also very good utility as uh 3000 uh which as a huge beat stick lets you kill your opponent faster and it's a very big push now despian comedy won him many games he says, I don't know why people aren't playing this card out skill drain out droplet, just an infinite amount of cards. A lot of people don't send this turn one to play around hand traps. It's just a very good card to have come out turn one with ad libitum. It's also just another body on field without having to remove Aliber. It's also another body for uh for Chimera. I just don't understand why people aren't playing this card. It's a staple in my opinion. Andres goes and says that he plays a pure version of Despia, uh, including the three Egypt chain, the polymerization, and the patchwork. He states that there should be no reason why you should be cutting this engine in this deck. There's so many ways the deck needs to send for costs, and this engine helps you utilize it via, you know, droplet, super poly, branded opening. Act. These cards that you utilize your consistency in your hand and discard without a problem. So he's trying to gain advantage and have like card advantage at all times. And he stated that later in the deck profile when he talks about uh droplet, how he realized there was a lot of times where he, he was discarding cards and he just wouldn't have enough resources to keep going. 
um polymerization is utilized when your opponent's when your opponent ashes your branded fusion and is the best card for Chim guardian chimera so it does not get valor informed it's very important the only downside to this package is opening multiple copies of edge imp or patchwork which happened to him in top four of Bagoda. so in order for him to not draw the third polymerization he actually cut one of the polymerizations since he played three in Bagoda. Um, realized he didn't want to see multiple polymerization, so he fixed it by adding the Despita Theater of the Branded. So you would see polymerization less in his hand and more off of the Edge Imp or Patchwork. He played Theater because it's a searchable polymerization in the deck. He said, the issue with this deck is a lot of players that don't know how to play... A lot of players don't know how to play the game without just resolving Branded Fusion which is incorrect. The deck has so many ways to keep playing without resolving that. Andres also played three branded in red. Let's see. He said it's also good to three to play three branded in red because he plays two Albion the Shadow Dragon. Um Albion lets you special summon it um from your hand by sending a branded from your hand or you can send one from your deck and place the albion on the bottom of your deck and draw a card so it's like an upstart goblin um he said this card is an upstart goblin or foolish burial albion makes it so he doesn't have to revolve around resolving branded fusion and is another name for branded in red he wanted to play three albion but after calculating the numbers in his deck he couldn't fit another since he was already at 45 cards Two was enough for him when he resolved it. It was phenomenal. The card let him get to his side deck cards. He played uh, one branded lost after seeing the first place list and Bogota playing it. He said one was perfect because we find the way to search it when we need to. The card also lets you abuse cards like Kit, uh, the Tri Brigade. And Ecclesia. Um, when I'm talking about Kit, I'm not talking about Tri-Brigade Kit. I'm talking about Springing's Kit, which is this one right here. Um, this is Branded and Lost. Uh, if you guys need to look up these cards, I'll have the Dueling Book link in the description below as well for y'all. If you guys haven't seen that already. Uh, he says... The best way to play around hand traps was to explode through a heavy Albaz engine. Branded Lost lets us search these three cards, and he shows Springen's Kit, Tri Brigade, Mercurier, I believe it's what it's pronounced, and Ecclesia for going second. Um, and he said that he cut the third droplet that he was originally playing for the Springen's Kit, which won him multiple games uh, and overperformed for him. Uh, he says he plays three Felina Albaz to utilize polymerization. He utilized it a lot for polymerization. It was a great top deck, especially when grand games. He states, I ended on the combo with Mirror Jade a lot without using branded fusion. Uh, and then shows three branded fusions is obvious. But he did state, even though I did play three of this card, we should try and resolve the branded fusion combo without actually opening branded fusion. There's a lot of times in this deck where you can combo without resolving branded fusion. And one thing duelists who play this deck need to understand is that you need to search other cards in your deck and search instead of branded fusion when you don't open it like branded lost. So there's a lot of times that, like when he's comboing that you need to be op you need to be like searching like different cards. Like you might even be needing to search uh the theater or you need to be searching branded lost so that your opponent can't respond to like your summons and they can't go spell your branded in red so it's more important for him to play around hand traps um and as you guys can see there are no hand traps out on his deck so he's trying to play around the hand traps and break boards um mm -hmm. He says there's a lot of times in this deck where you can combo without resolving branded fusion. Yep. There we go. Uh, Andres played zero hand traps and opted it instead to play two forbidden droplet and three super poly. He said the call by the grave, he missed it in uh, Bogota 
and he really loved the card even though he didn't really see it in mexico the card was just so good for him not to play he said uh the reason why he played zero hand traps is he got the idea from his testing partner jose and states originally we started playing the deck like everybody else 12 hand traps plus the engine after various tournaments we realized th that even without hand traps the deck could break through boards very easily and chimera is one of the is easily one of the best ways to out boards without using hand traps I don't have any problems with playing no hand traps in this deck. I've done it multiple times before in Thunder Dragon, Drytron, and multiple decks without hand traps. I'm not scared to play decks without hand traps. I realize with these decks, with or without a side deck, you can still play Yu-Gi-Oh! A deck like this without hand traps in the hands of a good player, your hands will always be live. The better player will almost always win if they play correctly. And I felt like I translated that correctly. Um, if anybody else speaks Spanish and y'all see the deck profile, feel free to comment down below if you think he meant something else. But that's pretty much what I got from the gist of it. Uh, last but not least, the last card in his site in his deck was Freytale Snow. He said the card won in multiple YCS titles, the 200th YCS today, and other tourneys. The card makes it so you can win through multiple negates, can be utilized to send turn one, especially when you have so many cards after comboing turn one. Um, and that's for his main deck, 45 cards. And this is in order of what he explained in the deck profile. If y'all need to like go through with this same video uh, for his side deck. So Andres said that his side deck was six cards different from Bogota. So the first nine cards that are originally in the same side deck in Bogota for him, he said three token collector card is self-explanatory. He says uh, three twin twisters. He states, realistically, we need something against heavy back row decks and not just rely on our engine to play through back row as not everything is possible with just the main deck. Then he states, three, there can be only one. These nine cards are staples in the side deck. I played them in Bogota. I made some changes for Guadalajara because I felt that the meta was going to be different and was expecting to play a lot of mirror matches. The thing about Bogota was the deck was fresh out. And a lot of people didn't have the time to test the deck. So I wasn't worried about playing the mirror match since people were not playing the deck optimally. For this event, there was a lot more information and a lot more lists for them to see. In which there would be more Despia players. There Can Be Only One was mainly used for Flunder and, well, the Swordswell deck. In Bogota, he actually had three Phantasmes and three Contaxes in the last bit. So the reason why you didn't play contact C again is because people started playing branded loss and the card was just dead. And uh, he states he doesn't go over why he didn't play Phantasma again. I think it's just he wanted to play more cards for the mirror match is what he stated. And more like variety. So you played two Nibiru. Uh, I said self-explanatory. Two DD Crow. I said DD Crow was very good in the mirror match. He didn't play them in Bogota again because he wasn't expecting the mirror match to be hard in Bogota. But he felt like with this tournament, there was going to be a lot more players, a lot more information, and more people were going to want to play the deck. Then he states 2D Barrier. I wasn't a big fan of this card, but I feel in the mirror match, it's very good. This card was used against me, but I feel like it was used in the wrong decks against me. People would debury me, make a mini combo, not kill me, and then pass back to me. So I don't understand why decks are playing it if they can't kill me in the following turn. But in a deck where you can just kill your opponent next turn, I feel like this card is insanely good. I wouldn't make any changes to the side deck. It was perfect. And then he goes on to his extra deck. So he says that Andres stated that his extra deck was nothing strange in his opinion. For pretty much like he's saying, like, if you know this deck and you see the cards in the extra deck, you should know why they're played. So he starts off with two Mirror Jade and two um, Lubellion. He says, this is a perfect number. I don't want to play two and one. I don't play one and two. I don't want to play one and one. You got to play two and two. It's the perfect number. No more and no less. It says one Draco Sapilia. I wanted to play two, but realistically, I don't have the space in the extra deck. Uh, two Guardian Chimera. The people he states this. The people that only play one are crazy. Realistically, if I could play three in the extra deck, I would. Goes on to two Masquerade. 
He says two is necessary. It's the most generic card in the extra deck to go into. He plays two Albion. Says this is the same as Chimera. Wish I could fit more, but two is the number. Not enough space in the extra deck. Uh, he plays two Despias in the extra deck. He plays uh, Quiratus. He says this card won me various games. In the mirror, it plays a crucial part that people don't know about. When this card is on the field, they have to either let it attack over when attacking a monster, or they have to kill the card and let you go into Albaz and just use our monster anyways. So no matter what, you're still getting value off of this. He plays one Proskinion. He says this card is not very common to see, but I see this. I think this card overperformed. Ecclesia comes to your hand very often, and with Edgemp, you usually have a Dark and Light already in your hand. The only thing I need for this fusion is any Despia plus Polymerization. This card is an animal against Swartzel, he states. Then at the very end, he states the last two cards in the extra deck are abnormal to others who play the deck. The first is Spring, Sprint, the Iron Dash Dragon, and Titanic Lad. It says, I didn't play the Tri Brigade Fusion because realistically, I didn't see it necessary. The effects of both of these cards is that you play through boards, and if they get removed, you get bonus effects to clear the board as well. Especially when cleaning up Palooza and just crashing over and playing on, it just lets you keep going. What I do in the end phase is I trigger Titanic Land to special summon Albaz, Albaz into Sprint, and then on my turn, if I use Titanic Land on my opponent's end phase, I'm able to move that to any column and pop whatever I need to in that column. So like a really good ability for this is he's able to just pop whatever he needs to on the following turn. So you can just move it to whatever column um, the problem cards are. So you can also use it to pop like floodgates as well. He said, there wasn't a single card in the extra deck I did not use. I'd use up to 10 to 11 fusions per game. Um, and then again, Andres says shout out to his sister. And he gives other various shout outs throughout the video. But again, if you guys haven't seen his deck profile, the link is in the description below. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see more content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.